Hello, Mama. Welcome to Reaching Abundance. Today, I'm excited to share with you a list of happiness-creating activities and why you might want to do them for when you're feeling kind of blah, down, or blue. I'm a list maker, for one. For two, when I'm in a funk or in the weeds of any sort, I can't see the way out. I'm just there, drowning, feeling sad and alone. You know what I'm talking about, right? Maybe it's been raining for three days in a row. Maybe there's some work drama that's got you grumpy. Maybe it's financial pressure. Or maybe just plain old lack of sleep. Well, I've been through all of those, so I totally get it. And since strategy may as well be my middle name, I'd like to head off the funk from the get-go with a list created in advance of things I can do to help shake off the bad mood and get going again. If you've ever been in a funk, in a bad mood, or had a lot on your plate but felt either unmotivated or like you just don't have the energy to do it, I gotcha. Moms chronically struggle from lack of sleep, overwhelm, too many to-dos, just to name a few challenges, and something as simple as your toddler's fit can set your mood to grr for the day, if you let it. The thing is, we mothers have the power to set the tone for the day for the entire household, and if you wake up feeling blah and want your day to have a more positive tone, You can control that. Part of creating abundance for ourselves and our family has to do with creating and encouraging a positive mindset. We can't all be happy-go-lucky all the time, and sometimes we need a little help, which is why I created this list. For you, yeah, but for me too. And as you listen today, remember, abundance is possible for all of us even though it looks different for each of us. And that is a beautiful thing. Welcome to the Reaching Abundance podcast, where your host, Virginia Elder, shares helpful guidance for moms around positive mindset, creating simplicity, practicing true self-care, and most of all, money management. Her financial journey toward a better life blossomed into an insatiable desire for overall happiness and abundance. Hang out with her right here each week while she ditches the taboos around women and money, shares resources, educates, and financially empowers all the mamas. Hey there, I'm Virginia, host of the Reaching Abundance podcast and financial coach at Happy Healthy Abundance a business created specifically to help moms find clarity, reduce overwhelm, and create the abundant life they dream of through financial education, mindset adjustments, and consciously choosing behaviors that will positively alter the trajectory of their family. Today, I want to address the fact that nobody can be joyful and bubbling with positivity all the time, including and especially me, and sometimes when I'm grumpy or in a funk, I'm so deep in the weeds that my thoughts are even murky. Sometimes it's like, even though I want to snap out of it, I can't even come up with a simple activity that would help me do so. It's a legit case of brain fog. I'll also share with you that my moods are definitely affected by the weather. I'm really likely to be cheery on a sunny day, and I might be a little down on a rainy, gloomy day. And I don't think I'm alone in this. By the way, did you know that the winter blues are really a real thing? Studies actually show that we're more likely to feel sad, negative, grumpy, or even depressed during the darker, colder months. And y'all, winter is coming. Okay, forgive my Game of Thrones reference, but for real, I know myself and I know some funky moods are on the horizon. And to head off the whole I'm grumpy and have brain fog so I can't even think of a way to snap out of it dilemma, 
I've created a list of 51 happiness creating activities. Yes, seriously. I shared about this on Facebook recently. Maybe you saw it. I asked everyone to share what they considered to be a happiness creating activity. I was looking for things that are very accessible, that almost anyone could do, that would bring almost anyone out of a funk anytime. That massive list of comments compiled with my own research created this list. Okay, so you're like, what's the point of this list though? We don't need another list, right? Well, when I'm in a bad mood, too tired to deal or ain't got time for that, Like most of us busy moms, I can scan over this list and pick something or maybe a couple of things that sound good that I think might actually give me a little jolt back to the positive side of the spectrum. Because here's the thing. Are you really going to show up to your day with vigor and handle the tasks at hand with resilience if you're feeling down? No. The way that you show up to any task, whether it's that work meeting, cleaning the bathrooms, creating a meal plan and budgeting for the week, or making after school hours fun for the kids, is not going to be the same when you're in a poor mood or a negative state of mind. So I need options. I need a list of ideas that can help. And surely out of 50 plus options, something's got to sound good, right? I was able to group the list of 50 plus happiness creating activities into four main categories. And it should be no surprise that physical movement and exercise were highly recommended. Working out creates endorphins, which naturally boost your mood. But I also personally experienced this odd sense of clarity while working out. While my body is physically moving and exerting energy, my mind wanders, processes things, and finds solutions. Some options for the list of movement-based activities to flip your mood are walking, running, hiking, biking, swimming, sitting on the porch, Jumping on a trampoline, yoga, dancing, listening to music, skiing, getting some fresh air, which that could mean anything, playing sports, watching the kids play sports, snorkeling, driving, beaching, and laking, just to name a few. So maybe you don't have access to all of these all the time. Like maybe you don't live near a beach. Hey, Me neither. (laughs) So beaching, snorkeling, and even laking aren't readily available to me. But I bet there are several other things on the list that are. I want to encourage you to snag some ideas here and from the show notes, but tweak that list to fit your lifestyle. Delete things that don't apply to you and add things that you'd actually probably really do. Meanwhile, notice that most of these physical activities can fit into the exercise category. So if you're a morning routine person, it's likely that you've knocked this out already and that you've staved off negativity for the day. If you don't have a morning routine and regularly experience grumpiness, maybe it's time to look into one. Actually, if you want, just reach out to me. I'll share mine with you. It's really easy to follow. Hey, mama, need a pick-me-up? A nice cup of hot tea usually does the trick for me. Whether I need a caffeinated boost mid-morning or a mug of decaf to wind down in the evenings, Tea Drops is the answer. Featured in Forbes, The Oprah Magazine, and People, just to name a few, These organic pressed drops dissolve in water like a bath bomb, but in your mug, and made from actual tea leaves, spices, and a tiny bit of organic cane sugar. The company is woman-owned, and the teas are all organic, gluten-free, and come in packaging that's 100% recyclable. 
Whether you love holiday flavors like orange cinnamon roll, if you prefer a robust taste like rose earl gray, or if you need some inflammation relief with a ginger turmeric blend, they have flavors you'll fall in love with. On top of that, every purchase of tea drops, no matter how big or small, contributes a year's supply of clean water to someone in need through the Thirst Project. Shop with my affiliate link at bit.ly slash R-A-T drops. That's bit.ly slash R-A-T-E-A-D-R-O-P-S. Or click through the banner in the show notes. Snag a variety pack to try for yourself and give your favorite flavors as gifts during the upcoming holidays. When I skip my morning routine, I'm also typically skipping my exercise for the day, and I'm more likely to feel blah, misaligned, or grumpy. So seeing the group of movement-based activities has the most suggestions and comes most highly recommended toward creating happiness That makes complete sense to me. The next largest and most commonly recommended category has to do with doing things that foster or boost your creativity. When we feel like we're contributing, creating, or using our imagination, our brain rewires toward energy, enthusiasm, and excitement. Creative, happiness-inducing activities include... Painting, drawing, coloring, journaling, singing, writing thank you notes, sewing, baking, gardening, cooking, macrame and knitting, playing a musical instrument, calendaring, list making, and decorating. Think about this. All of these creative activities can be done with or without the kids depending on if you want to involve them, and can be aimed toward creating gifts, decor, hobby, or business-related items. Even just something so simple as painting your nails or coloring in a coloring book can be a creative outlet. And since I mentioned coloring, I've got to tell you about the Gumball Goals coloring sheet that's available to you as a free download. You can use it as a fun and colorful, dare I say, creative way to work toward any savings or debt payoff goal. You set your goal amount, divide it by the number of gumballs on the page, and each time you save or pay off that amount, you get to color one of the gumballs in the jar. This is a great visual for you or your kids and a wonderful way to make paying off debt or saving toward a certain goal, exciting for the whole family. Download your own Gumball Goals coloring sheet and print as many as you like at happyhealthyabundance.net slash color. Or just check out the show notes and pop your info in the opt-in there. When you're being creative, much like during exercise, your energy is focused on building this new thing, which allows your mind to wander, to calculate, to sort through the drama, and basically to problem solve. Which is why if you don't feel like anything movement-wise will help, I highly recommend turning toward creativity as your outlet. The final two categories are smaller, but just as significant. Sometimes physical movement just isn't happening, And you may not really feel creative. So this is where the connection category might help. I'll be the first to say that when I'm in a funk, the last thing I tend to do is reach out. I naturally turn inward, duck interaction, and maybe even go MIA. But it's also likely that a good conversation or uplifting text string is all I need. So... Some connection fostering activities include a coffee date, volunteering, helping a neighbor, good conversation, messaging a friend, call a loved one, affirmations, playing with the kids, a heart-to-heart hug, 
meditation, hanging out with and listening to your kids, massage, and loving on your pets. Notice there are activities you can do that don't necessarily require you to reach out to another human, like loving on your pets, meditation, and affirmations. These things help you connect to yourself, the things that you envision or that bring you joy. So don't dismiss this category if you aren't the social type. Again, a couple of these activities might fall into your morning routine. And again, I find that quite convenient. If you do feel like connecting, keep in mind that a coffee date can be in your own home with your partner or virtually via Zoom, given the current pandemic. Beyond this, Let's just be real and say that when you're in a funk, sometimes nothing on the activity list seems appetizing. That's okay. It's okay to feel blue. And sometimes we just need to be instead of trying to jolt ourselves to happiness. Once in a while, it's okay to lean into those grumpy or sad feelings and really just feel them. This is where the veg out category comes in. Sometimes sleeping, eating ice cream, laying on the couch and watching Netflix all day, having a glass of wine or a myriad of other kinds of consumptive or even lazy activities, if you will, might be the answer. It's okay to just take the day off, be grumpy, pull the covers over your head sometimes. This list of happiness-creating activities is available if you want to snap out of it, but it's important to listen to our bodies and lean into that intuition too. So remember, you deserve a day off. Get some hot cocoa, a fuzzy blanket, and just do nothing if you need to. And something I struggle with? Don't feel guilty about it either. Okay, mama. Please do take this list and tweak it to fit your lifestyle and what you have access to. Add things that bring you joy that I didn't list. Cross off things that I said that you'd never do. And customize this list for you. And then keep it by your bedside or in your journal so the next time you're in a funk, you know right where to turn. Like I said earlier, sometimes it's important to lean into the mood rather than out of it. I'll leave that judgment call up to you. If you've been experiencing grief, clinical depression, or other severe emotions, it's most important to get help really processing these emotions. Seek medical help without shame and try not to force yourself to snap out of it until you're emotionally and mentally ready to do so. On the other hand, we all experience ups and downs naturally, some more than others. We're in the middle of fall as I'm recording this. We just changed our clocks back, and the shorter days with less sunshine are here. The winter blues, also known as seasonal affective disorder, is a real thing. And the less sunlight we have, the more likely we are to feel down. Being conscious of this and purposely getting some sunlight in the mornings throughout the winter will help. I hope that after listening to this today, you now have a game plan, a list of nearly 50 happiness-creating activities you can scan the next time you need a little boost of positivity so you won't feel stuck, lost in the weeds, or like you don't have time to be off, but you don't know how to get back on. My intention is that this episode helps moms who want a reset but can't come up with a solution on their own in the moment. And remember, I'm right there with you using this list too. Before you go, I want to thank you for listening to Reaching Abundance. This podcast exists to help mamas live happier, healthier, and more abundantly in every way possible. And I think this episode contributes significantly towards this goal. I'd love to keep in touch with you, hear from you, and connect with you. So please make sure you're subscribed to the show in your podcast app, 
following me on Instagram at Happy Healthy Abundance. And the show is even on YouTube at Happy Healthy Abundance. So please subscribe there too. Thank you again for being here with me today. I really, truly believe we can have it all through intention, consistency, and always trying to be present in the moment. This week, edge a little closer to reaching abundance by purposely implementing one, just one, of these happiness-generating activities into your routine. Because if creating joy is part of your routine, it's less likely you'll fall deep into a slump and need this list anyway. Don't forget to check out the show notes at reachingabundance.com where you'll find the links to order your own tea drops, snag your gumball coloring goals free download, and the full list of happiness creating activities. I look forward to talking with you again next time.